All right, lads. I think it's time we should talk some uh, India versus England, the third test at Headingley, uh, finishing up last night in Leeds. Uh, we did a quick video at uh, the start of day three, um, but I think we'll do a quick recap uh, to catch us up to where we are now from from then and what happened in the test before we go into the last well, day worth of action um, that, that came out of that test match. So, Peppy, how did, how did it end? Well, how did it start and how did it end up? Yeah, we'll go through that just in a second, Sean. Uh, we just can't breeze over the fact that you're wearing a wide brim hat inside. I, I know you're pale skin, mate, but the uh, the, the podcast lights can't be that bright. Jeez, <laughs> he's already looking a little bit sunburnt. <laughs> well, he's gone. I got to protect the face. All right, all right, settle down. <laughs> I reckon you'd fit in very well in the north of England up there. <laughs> Anyways, let's uh, let's run through yeah those first few days. Uh, we won't spend too much time on it because we did cover it in a previous video. Please check that out if you want to see uh, an in-depth uh, uh, recap of the first two days. But uh, yeah, unfortunately for the Indians uh, and and to the joy of the uh, of the English fans, uh, day one uh, belonged all to to England, uh, skittling the tourists for just seventy eight. Uh, it was all Jimmy Anderson early on. He had the ball hooping uh, and made light work of the uh, Indian top order and got the prize scalp of Virat Kohli. Uh, we did mention uh, in, the, in our other video that you don't normally see Jimmy Anderson celebrate a, a wicket like he did there. So there obviously is uh, uh, some still some tensions left over from those war of words from the second test. Uh, but it's good to see, you know, a lot of passion uh, there. Uh, Anderson finished up with three for six off eight overs, if you don't mind. Uh, and Joss Butler had five catches in that uh, in that Indian first innings. Uh, and and the English openers were out there batting before T on uh, on day one. Um, and it was uh, Hamid and Burns opening the bat uh, for the English. Uh, and both of them really had a lot of pressure on them uh, to score runs. Uh, Hamid coming away with 68 and Burns making 61. And then uh, David Milan, AC Milan, recalled into the side a Yorkshire man himself uh, batting in, uh, in front of his home crowd. Uh, he made a good 70. Uh, so you'd imagine he'll be sticking around for the next test. And, of course, yeah. we spoke about it. It was all Joe Root with another century. Three tons from three tests, a quick fire, 121. Um, and England made an imposing 432 which is pretty much where we got to in our other video. Uh, you boys will remember I was saying uh, that that lower order uh, for for the English bats, uh, they would have printed themselves a license to go have a have a swing on on the start of day three, and uh, they, right. they sure did. That uh, that Ollie Robinson dismissal, mate, that looked like a Sunday social dismissal. I reckon I've seen boys <laughs> step, stepping in away, throwing the kitchen sink. He, he, he just about did his back. He's a fast bowler. I was concerned about his back th throwing the bat around like that, getting clean bowled, uh, and looked yeah. like a shot that I, that I could probably play. I reckon in uh, in Test cricket. Uh, they, and then, they only put ten on, I think, for the start of the day three as well. They, they added very little. Um, yeah, added very three. little. And yeah. look, when when you're already up three hundred and fifty, uh, you probably don't need to be out there. Hence the license giving and uh, the uh, the throwing away of wickets. But uh, I just I did like that shot from Molly Robinson. It, it really made me feel better about some of the shots that I've played in park cricket. Um, there was a little bit of a story here that's uh, sort of developed from day three with the the tape on Rishabh Pant's gloves. Uh, what did you hear about this, Sean? Yeah, well, I think Monks was actually the one that brought it up. And um, do you want to cover it quickly, James, on the uh, the ruling, and then we're going to have a quick chat about the, the thoughts. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, a bit of an interesting one. So, obviously, through through the day, I guess, Pant had um, taped his uh, little finger up to his, I guess, ring finger on both hands uh, with some of the athlete's tape. Um, and then, yeah, I guess, yeah, during the day, the umpire had come up to him and told him to re remove the tape Um Looks like it was in part due to, um, I guess, the rules of cricket. Um, you're only allowed webbing in between your thumb and index finger. So, yeah, so the the umpire obviously has decided that the tape is some sort of webbing um, and, yeah, has told him to remove it. So it sounds like it caused a little bit of a controversy. Some of the commentators were saying, I think, um, Milan was, was dismissed by a catch by part, so they'll contemplating like should Milan um, come back out because that wasn't a legal out and 
yeah, so I think it's a lot of it's more just news than anything else. But yeah, what are you what are your guys' thoughts about that? Yeah, well, another test, another small controversy they had to bring out uh, sales headlines. But yeah. looking at it, we we had a look at it. Um, it is fabric tape, so maybe they thought something to do with the of the fabric. You know, the, the actually it's a rough surface versus like electrician tape, which is shiny. Um, he. He's buddy taping it, so obviously he's worried about potentially breaking the bottom of the fingers, and he does have to catch those fast balls coming from the fast bowlers. Yeah, uh, and you, Sean, mentioned that he's done it before as well. Yeah, like I found a picture of him playing India one-day tests, uh, well, one-day cricket, sorry, um, from 2019 over two years ago, and his fingers are taped like that. So it wouldn't surprise me if it's a pretty uh, regular concurrence for him to that's how he does it. But, you know, mm. if it's fabric tape, the inside of his gloves – uh, fabric, so um, I guess it's he's not really gaining too much of an advantage there. My only thinking was maybe it wasn't taped hard enough and it was a little bit loose, and then that's how you create that extra webbing. But even still, I think there's much to do about nothing really. Um, yeah. You can't, you can't. I vote with the the, the gloves because since they're meant to be separate, you can't buddy tape your fingers in there. Maybe he'll mm. get a custom made glove where it's actually that. Um, was it third and fourth finger will actually be one finger, and you can do it together and tape them together. Maybe ask for something like that, but I don't know. It, it, it nothing to do here, is why I think of it. <laughs> Here's a different angle. Maybe Rishabh pants a, in a in an Indian gang, and that's his gang sign that he throws. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, nah, in all seriousness, I can't believe we've spoken about this for as long as we have. <laughs> um, yeah, one of those yeah. weird, you know, cricket's an old game. There's old yeah. rules in there. I imagine one of the English. Uh, Players maybe made a complaint about it, and that's why they they looked into it. But uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see uh, how he lines up uh, in the in the fourth test. Definitely. So, so then run into day three mm-hmm. uh, after the England team have gotten all out, and India kind of stood up. They really had the bat they had the next two days, and they accomplished the first goal of batting all of day three um, mm-hmm. with uh, only a few wickets. So perhaps how did they do overall? Run through some of their Day three action. Yeah, they they sort of um, swung the test back into, uh, you know, may, maybe looking like it might go to day five. Obviously, that didn't eventuate. But day three uh, probably belonged to India. Um, they started off a lot better than their first innings. Not hard, obviously. Um, <laughs> they, they managed to see off that, that new ball lasting 18 overs. But they were doing it tough out there. Uh, Kale Rahul, the first to go, uh, eight runs of just 50, uh, off, uh, off 54 balls, so just eight runs, I should say. And it was a great catch from Johnny Bairstow, uh, diving to his left, one-hander, stuck the mid out, and it just stuck off um, off the bowling of Overton. And not a good test for Kale Rahul, but uh, he's been pretty good this series, so, uh, you know, cut him some slack there, I guess. <laughs> uh, and then and then Rohit Sharma and and Pujara uh, got a bit of a partnership going on. Uh, they they put together uh, 82. Uh, Sharma still chasing that that overseas 100. He was dismissed with 59. Uh, he probably should be counting his lucky stars that he didn't get given LB uh, on 39. Um, mm-hmm. The the time you know they got the timer for the DRS. You know 15 seconds. And they'll often leave it late because they're umming and ahhing, and then you know they'll they'll call for the DRS. Root called for it, but the 15 seconds had actually expired. So they're like, no, sorry, you didn't get it in in time. But then they still went on to show the the Hawkeye in the highlights, and it was out. So a little a little bit of um of a mishap there from the English skipper didn't end up costing him too much. He only added 20 runs after that, uh, and surprisingly, it was LBW, and it was. <laughs> It was less out than the than the one that, that they did for you. Uh, it was just just grabbing the outside of leg stump, according to Hawkeye. Uh, so Sharma goes for fifty nine, uh, and then you wouldn't believe it, boys. Guess who's back? Back again. Javo's back. Tell a friend he got to the middle this time. He he got out in full Indian batting kit. And copped an absolute spray from Johnny Bairstow. Uh, you can look that one up and try and lip read what Bairstow was saying. <laughs> he was escorted off the field by the security guards, uh, much to the uh, disappointment of uh, of the Yorkshire faithful. They were, they were chanting yeah. Jarbo's name as he was getting dragged off the field, and he's uh, he, he's copped a life ban from Headingley for his troubles. Uh, but two tests in a row, he's managed to uh, interfere. I wonder. Next week, I wonder what his plans are for Hilarious. for the Oval. 
<laughs> Did you boys realise that he's actually a YouTube prankster? I've only just sort of worked that out this weekend. Uh, it would surprise me with uh, the amount of extra following and um, promotion he's been getting the last couple of weeks. Uh, yeah, but but he, he's got prank videos from like eight years ago. Uh, a few questionable ones. I was I was telling you in the in the group text. That's right. Put, putting on like a old man mask and gun, just trying to bash girls in the streets of London. It was uh, eight years ago. It was not that long ago. But geez, I don't know if you'd be getting away with that today. And uh, and a, a, a kind of weird one where he pretends to kill himself by jumping off, off, off the Thames. Uh, so a little bit more savoury, I think, the uh, the pitch in, invasion videos. And I'll tell you what, it's doing him well, like wonders. It seems to be everyone getting around Jarvo and <laughs> and wanting to see him again, uh, invading invading uh, the, the fourth test, perhaps. Yeah, well, Coley probably wanted some extra batting help, so they, might have, they could have used him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Could have needed it. I don't know how good he'd go. Uh, I clicked on his on his YouTube video and it wrote uh, bat, he wrote Batman like like the, <laughs> he had no S in there. He, he insinuated <laughs> that uh, that he was uh, a Christian Bale, if you will. So he, he can't spell he can't spell the job description. I don't know if he could do it too well. I don't know. Imagine if he had faced a wall. <laughs> <laughs> They should have let him like the, the bomb yeah, right. Yeah, that's right. All right, fa- yeah, face up, face up, and I'll put one on your head, Jarvo. And see, Just, yeah, nice see, bouncer or something. Yeah, see how long you want to stay out here. <laughs> Corporal punishment. Uh, that's what we wanted. Yeah. Security anyway. guards not realizing until he's on the pitch. Though shocking, is a bit... man. Shocking. Yeah. <laughs> we we were talking about it during the week. Uh, you know that pitch invasion uh, in that uh, that soccer game in Nice how it just sort of was allowed to happen. And we watch a lot of American sports. So I don't think uh, you'd last too long on, on a field getting close to a, you know, multi-million dollar athlete in, in the States. So let's put it that way. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I think the threat, uh, well, they definitely will tase people in the US, but the threat of semi-automatic <laughs> weapons probably also <laughs> is a big deterrent for pitch invasions. In, uh, yeah. That's right. That's right. Anyway, but that's about, yeah. about Jarvo 69. Uh, <laughs> Let's talk about Virat Kohli. Uh, he had a little bit of an LBW scare on Nort. Didn't offer a shot, uh, but the ball was going well over. And then after that, actually, he looked looked quite good. Um, playing some vintage uh, Virat Kohli shots there in a 99 run partnership with uh, Chideshwar Pujara. So I think uh, this is we're, we're talking the start of day four here now. So they got three yeah, games. Uh, no, three. no, no. The, 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 the third session from day three. Yes, yeah. yeah. And I think, what did Coley finish up? About 40-odd, I think, at the end of that day. Leading yeah, and, and Pujara finished on 91 at, at the end of day three. Um, and th- maybe more unbelievable than, a, than a, a pitch invader getting to the stumps was Pujara scoring at 48 run, runs per 100 balls. He was striking at 48. I've never seen him. <laughs> I've never seen him bat, bat like that. But yeah, that that got us through till uh, the end of day three, and then it was the second new ball. Uh, I think Root was trying to ask for it at the end of day three, and they had said no. Uh, the time is done for the day. We'll have to come back out day four, and then that second new ball uh, started causing some real big problems for the Indians. Um, it was uh, early on in the in the fourth day that Pujara left one, a uh, big in swinger from Ollie Robinson, hit his front pad, not offering a shot. Uh, you always you know, got to be careful when that happens. Uh, given not out, they reviewed it, and uh, it was um, it was grabbing the top of off, and then that just started a cascade, really, of uh, of an Indian collapse. Uh, Coley, he was given um, out on 44. Uh, there was a little sound, but it looked like he hit the ground. Uh, he reviewed it and given not out, uh, but he didn't make the most of it. He, uh, he only added another 11 runs, uh, scoring 55. Uh, but it is the first time that he's reached 50 this series, and I was texting you boys uh, the other night when when we, um, we saw the highlights. It's just it's uh, a textbook way for Coley to get out at the moment, isn't it? Just just playing at these balls that are sort of fifth, sixth stump, just outside off. Yeah, so they've got that plan, that line and length. They obviously know they know he likes to play at that and um, have a swing, and well, they've been getting nibbles on it. And for me, watching this, I think there's a point. Coley's their backbone, and essentially as soon as he was gone, they lost all their backbone, and then it was all downhill from here. 
it, it was big sure time, was. but but Rahane and Punt and Jadeja are all recognised bats. Like, it, sure, it, it was the start of the end for the Indians, but you, you've got three, you know, world class guys still to come in there, so you, it doesn't all fall with on on the shoulders of Colby. No, uh, but I guess my point was they knew they had to bat the rest of that day and maybe into some of them the following day as well. And they were hoping Coley would get a big score to kind of lead and, you know, mm -hmm. him getting out on 55. Um, I'm not saying they, they packed it in, but I, I think that, you know, the air in their mistake, you know, they had so much energy in the last test match for this. I think it just, well, in this test match at that point, just let it all out of the room and then it just mm -hmm. fell on a heap. Yeah, it, it is a good it is a good point you make there because the way that he was batting, he was driving really well. He did play and miss a fair few times. That you do get that when the ball's swinging around at Headingley. Uh, but we were kind of seeing a little bit of the old Virat Kohli. His timing timing was on on a lot of his drives, and in that over uh, before before he snicked up to Ollie Robinson, he had actually taken him for two boundaries that over. So, mm. and he, he, as soon as he got out, he was practicing the leave. He knew what he should have been doing. He should have been leaving it. And uh, and Rahane actually uh, got out in a very similar way uh, off Jimmy Anderson, not not off Ollie Robinson, but the same same thing, just playing at one, you know, that he probably didn't need to. And I suppose that the swinging conditions um, at Headingley maybe play into your mind as a batsman. There, you want to get ball on bat because we've seen some of these big in swinging ones, like the one that Pujara left. And funnily enough, he he left one that he should he shouldn't he shouldn't have left and and got got L, given LB. Uh, and then the other boys have have all got out playing. At, Punt, Punt was the same playing at one that he probably could have could have left alone. Do you, do you see the way Punt went out the bat? You wouldn't uh, you wouldn't tell uh, that they had to try and bat another day and a half. He was he was he doesn't matter where where you are in the world, what the situation is in the game. Rishab Punt gone a Rishab Punt, and uh, he, he he was he was charging. He was playing some some weird weird shots, and he didn't hang around long. Uh, he snicked up. Uh, Robinson, and then it was all really uh, for for mine. This is when it was well and truly over. Yeah, well, I, I want to make two quick points here. Like, what's really really interesting in this second innings, uh, Jimmy Anderson only got one wicket, uh, mm -hmm. so like he, getting support where he needed it. Um, but also, I think especially when they got more into the tail end of this, there were I would, I reckon there was very much um, not there was not. Sorry, I fucked this. Well, there <laughs> wasn't very much swing happening at that point. It was a lot more seam movement. So it was yeah. all line and length and a little bit of seam movement, and that's how they got all the bottom end guys out, which, again, stark contrast to last test where they just tried to bounce them completely yeah. off the pitch. They actually, you know, patience, keep the three, um, you know, slippers in there to, you know, we'll build up the pressure and get the wickets that way. And it clearly showed it worked. You know, that's the game plan. We talked about that leading into the test. That was the game plan they needed to do, and they executed it, and they dominated in four days. So, yeah, and, and it, it, we saw it in that first innings when they skittled them for seventy-eight. They they didn't change anything. We, we spoke about in the last pod about Nasser Hussein saying just stick to the plan, just stick to the plan. Treat you know treat these guys like you would treat a Virat Kohli or a Pujara, you know, because if if it, to steal Nasser's words, you know, if it's good enough for Kohli, it's good enough for a tail ender. Yeah. Um, and, and and that's that's what they did. I thought it was also really good that maybe showing a little bit of roots of leadership in here that after day three, where they've spent nearly the whole day in the field trying these things, hasn't mm. been successful. Day four, coming back out and just continuing it, not changing it up and trying to let's try a different plan. They've gone. This is the this is the method we've got to do. We will just stick to it. We'll sure. get the results. Um, we've got plenty of time. Uh, you know if they. I think I said in the last video, we're teetering on the edge of um, India could maybe go out and make 600 if they just get a roll on here and away they go. Um, yeah. But they just get through that one or two spots, stick to their plan, and it'll all work out. I think yeah. that's probably what Rich's message was, and it did. And then, the, you know, the boys were super hyped every time they got a wicket because they knew it's working. This is our game plan. Let's stick to it. Well, exactly right. At, at stumps at day three, you're kind of thinking, man, you know, this ain't over. There's still uh, there's still two days of Test cricket. We've seen weirder weirder shit happen in the past, um, and and yeah, they, they stuck to their plan. They did get that second new ball, so it was starting to swing around a little bit more. But I do agree with you, Sean. A lot of those wickets, they weren't you know real peach you know out swinging swinging balls. Ball was um, one of, <laughs> yeah, the one the one to Pujara that that swung in a lot. 
but but the ones that that Coley, Rahane, and Punt got out to was just a little bit off the seam and not much else. Yeah, agree. Yeah. So then I think the JJ came out and had a quick fire thirty, um, <laughs> five fours and a six. He, yeah. He went after he, Al. Um, Jadu was batting like he's still in the IPL, which is, you know, a bit of, bit of entertainment. I think he was kind of thinking, oh, well, uh, I don't think we're winning this test, so, you know, I may as well have a bit of a blaze. Uh, and then, yeah, once he got out, you, you know, you knew that the, that England weren't going to have to bat again. Uh, and did you guys see the ball uh, from Moeen Ali that got Mohamed Shami? That, I always, you know, like to kind of pay out a little bit on Moeen Ali like he's just a part-time bowler. That spun a foot and a half. Two, let's call it two at foot. Least, let's, call it least, two, yeah, two let's call it two <laughs> foot. That was a that was a peach. Yeah. Well, that's that's what you want from Ali as well. Like you need him to, especially on day four. Hopefully, the pitch is starting to crumble at that point. You yeah, use yeah. those foot marks mm. and turn it a bit and make it a bit uncomfortable for the tail enders. And on a deck that's not renowned for being kind to spinners, uh, that the the commentators were sort of harping on that throughout. If you look at you know up up in the um up in the, the trophy room or whatever they've got there at Headingley, you know, they've got all the test match records, you know, most wickets at the ground, most wickets in an innings. It's all quicks. It's all quicks up there. So, uh, yeah, good, good ripping ball there from, from Mo and Ali. I what think, the, I think the only wicket actually in, um, uh, from, from the English, um, spinners, like him and yeah, Root didn't take one and, and he only yeah. took that one. Yeah. Well, you probably add Ole Robinson to that list because he did get a Michelle in this one. He got a Michelle Pfeiffer. Uh, yeah. Five, five in yeah. this second inning. He's got seven for 81 overall in the match and was man of the match. Mm-hmm. Um, great. Un- unbelievable bowling performance from him, really, con- considering that the, no Joffre Archer, no Stuart Broad, no Wokes, no Wood. Like, he is only in, in his fourth test match uh, and he's really stamped his uh, authority in these last two, hasn't he? Yeah. I don't think... Does, yeah. And good to, not to harp on it, but go back to the two points we said leading in his test. Uh, Root needed support batting, and he got that from the top three above him. They all hit over 50, tick. And then <laughs> Jimmy Anderson, that, you know, we need to play to the weather, play to our conditions, use the line and length and the swing, and hopefully he can get some support and tick. Uh, they got some support out of that. So that's the game plan. Let's see if they can take that and run it through the next two tests. Because sure. it's a series, uh, one apiece. So it'll be interesting to see how that progresses going into the fourth test. Yeah, I was seeing a lot on um, on Facebook and social media. They was they were talking about you know who would be in your England eleven, and a joke got a bit of a roll on, and was all the top comments where it was just seven Joe Roots and four Jimmy Andersons. <laughs> Pretty uh, much. <laughs> that that that's the best Fairly. English best English eleven. Uh, and from the first two tests, you kind of have to agree with that sentiment. But uh, yeah, it was good. It was a really good team effort. Obviously spearheaded. You know, Roots in un- unbelievable form, scored a ton again. In. But yeah, when when you get help uh, from, from the from the other top three bat bats and Robinson bowls like he did, and uh, let's not forget Craig Overton uh, being yeah. recalled into the side there, uh, he will look really really good. Um, so yeah, it's good, and it also it, it makes it interesting now for for the Ashes, I guess. If Robinson keeps bowling like this in these last two tests, it's going to be hard to leave him out. Um, out of their their best eleven for when they come down here. Obviously, different conditions. He's not going to be able to swing the ball like he can um, in England there. But wouldn't be surprised if we're seeing Ollie Robinson playing for England here in the Ashes come summertime. Yeah, well, you think they'd bring him, uh, bring him in the squad. You know, Def- yeah, it's, it's a long series yeah. down here. Um, but yeah, he did. i just double checked. He did get six for this match, um, three in each inning. So, you know, solid addition um, into the squad. Overton, yeah, Overton. Yeah, back, yeah, back to Overton again. Yeah, he, he may, may be pushing for selection, but yeah, uh, with with Robinson, I I really like what I've seen out of him, and you'd imagine, yeah, mm. but both of them will definitely be in the squad. Uh, it just might make selections uh, interesting for who's going to be their best eleven, and uh, speaks about the the English bowling depth, I guess. Um, yeah, to to have you know four front line guys uh, out, you know, your only front line guy there is Jimmy Anderson, who is 39 years old. Um, these boys really took their opportunity. Yep. I'll tell you who didn't take their opportunity, that the Headingley ground staff. Mate, what was going on? They had four bloody practice decks on both sides of the outfield. Normally you'll just see yeah. them sort of tucked away in a corner somewhere. You'd hate to be sliding on that. And then there was Rough. patches of brown everywhere. It was a, a lawn fanatic's worst nightmare. <laughs> you, you, I guarantee you. 
When when the ashes come around, you'll be looking at the at the pristine work that the that the Melbourne Cricket Ground staff do, or or in, anywhere here. That I don't know if uh, if you can. Uh, like it, it kind of looked like I was watching a, a, a game, like the, a surface in the West Indies or something. You'd think with the amount of rain that they get up it, up there in the north of England, they'd be able to have an immaculate looking ground. It was a uh, yeah, pretty woeful, I thought. Yeah, I agree to that. Yeah. Like they, they were talking about it, I think day one as well. It was like, yeah, there's four, four or five on this side, and there's three or four on the other side, both on the edge, of like right near the perimeter. But it did comes infield and. Then you've got the four or five yep. in the middle of the square. So yeah, there was a lot, a lot of dry grass out there around the middle of the whole oval. Um, Mate, there was more more pitches than grass than there was green grass out there. <laughs> it's it's amazing that Jarvo made it to the to the middle pitcher. He could have just walked to the one of the outside ones. He would have only had to go five meters into the into the field of play. Uh, yeah. Anyways, um, moving forward, it's a, it's a quick turnaround uh, before the fourth test at the Oval starts Thursday. Uh, so it'll be a late night uh, for us uh, come Thursday night. Um, you can't imagine there'll be any changes to the sides unless perhaps uh, one of the quicks pulled up sore. We haven't heard anything uh, just yet. Uh, and Burns and Hamid uh, both making runs. Uh, that that definitely takes a bit of pressure off them. You'd imagine both sides unchanged, uh, un- unless uh, maybe Ashwin gets a gets a run. Um, I was thinking the exact same thing. Yeah, if, in, yeah. if India was going to make any tweaks, maybe they bring in the old head veteran um, to yeah. come in. Um, but, but this this whole series, we haven't seen any effectiveness of, of spin bowling really. So. Yeah, that, that, Wrong I, I'd, I'd, I'd be surprised if they do bring in Ashwin, but uh, we'll, we'll know in a, what only four days' time. And yeah. Yeah, I don't think they're going to make too many changes to their batting lineup. I think they're probably pretty happy with how that's been going. The England side on the on the flip side um, probably won't make any changes from a winning team. Uh, mm-hmm. If I had to pick a bone with anyone, it would probably be Josh Butler, who's um, been uh, struggling to score runs. But I don't think they've got any better wicket keepers in the, out in England. Well, best, best I can keep. True. So whether they bring in an extra bat that but. Joss has has struggled this series, but his test record is really good. Remember, we were looking at it uh, going into the series, averages mm. mid forties. Um, so yeah, I, I I don't think he gets gets dropped. Uh, and and had five. five. I know they were, they were they were all guineas, but did have five catches in that first <laughs> innings. Uh, yeah, I'd I'd be yep. very very surprised uh, outside of someone pulling up sore that they change a side that won by an innings. Agree, definitely. Definitely, definitely, yeah. All right, boys. Well, I think that'll wrap us up for today. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. If you like if you like uh, this content, listening to us dribble about sport, please give us a subscribe. Uh, check us out on Instagram and Twitter on the Esky. And uh, I'll see you blokes probably Thursday night for um, our next regular pod. Yep, day one of this yeah, test. Will do. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep, footy we'll finals, finals. Uh, plenty of sport happening overseas. Golf, F1, it's all happening. Yeah, that's it. Definitely. Thank you, boys. We'll chat Good. soon. Enjoy. Yeah. Bravo, lads. Catch ya. Catch ya. Right. Bye.